In this video, we are going to be going over how to troubleshoot and wire three-way switches in a house. And this is something that took me a little while to learn, so I'm hoping to make this to help other people so that it doesn't take you quite as long to learn it as I do. Three-way switches are pretty complicated. You'd think a normal light switch like this is pretty simple. You just have two leads and you attach them to it, and then it's really simple to just turn it on and off. This little wire right here, or screw, is for the ground wire. Um, but this is a simple one-way switch, and it just links these two wires when it's on the on position, disconnects them when it's in the off position. And um, with three-way switches, they have an additional screw. They have this little black screw right here, and this is called your line wire. And identifying your line wire is tricky, and it's the main reason why most three-way switches and uh, housing setups don't work is because people have failed to identify the appropriate line wire and you have one line wire on each side of your circuit so if you had uh, one light bulb and then two uh, switches like if this was our hallway and this was our light bulb um, both of these have one line wire that you need to identify and uh, the tools that you're gonna need to do this job and three-way switches are so cheap that I highly recommend just replacing them so you don't need to even wonder if uh, it's potentially a bad switch. I got these at my local hardware store for $4 each, I think. Um, and then, so get two three-way switches, just replace them. Uh, Levitin is a decent brand and the switches have a good uh, feel to them that I really like. Um, you'll also need a voltage tester and the way this thing works is you hold it down and then you press this button and you hold it. So if there is voltage, if you have not turned off the power, this thing will beep and flash like crazy, and I'll show you guys in a little bit. So you do need placement three-way switches, a voltmeter checker. Uh, you also will need needle nose pliers. Uh, needle nose pliers are a lot nicer to use because it's easier to bend the copper wires to get these little hooks that will go around these screws when you're actually installing them uh, on the switches. Um, but you can get away with other types of pliers if you really need to. Also, highly recommend having real wire cutters because these make stripping your copper wires if you need to cut them significantly easier. And then finally, you'll need a Phillips and or a flathead screwdriver. And these are for taking off the face plates. And I'm going to be replacing the face plates as well just so that everything looks nice and clean afterwards. Uh, and you'll also need it for uh, this part where you're screwing down the copper wires. And then as a final thing that's uh, nice to have would be a backup light. Um, in this case it's a little LED thing because you will be turning off power to the place where you're going to be working on this stuff. And you might like to have some tape as well or uh, if someone's kind enough to give it to you, pre-labeled tape so you can identify uh, which of these wires are your line and load wires or your traveler wires? And so um, These are all the things that you're gonna need to do this job and The other part is like when you're at your local hardware store and you're buying switches Make sure to make make sure to check that you're getting a three-way switch and not a normal switch because uh, And you can check really easily if you have only two leads on it and not another one a little black one um, then it's a normal switch. So sometimes they're all chucked into like a shelf and you're like, oh, I'll just grab two and then you run out and you realize, oh damn, I didn't have the right one. So um, make sure you're using and you have the correct switch type before you start this job as well. And with that out of the way, we're going to now turn off the uh, power to our wall and actually begin this job. Okay, for demonstration purposes, uh, I have taken out the two uh, flathead screws that hold in the faceplate here and I'm going to take this off. Um, something that I think is important to do before you go to your circuit breaker is first turn on the lights in the hallway um, so that when you turn your circuit breaker you'll be able to visually see very quickly whether or not the uh, circuit breaker has been killed. And I'm also going to use this opportunity to demonstrate how these voltmeters are supposed to work. So um, note here how it beeps once. Um, when I press it, but when I hold it next to these line wires, or these wires that are live right now, um, it's beeping like crazy to indicate that this is currently a live circuit, so we need to be very careful. 
Um, but yeah, so with the lights on and checking that your voltmeter actually does register uh, positives, um, now would be a good time to actually go to our circuit breaker and then start uh, turning off the circuit for this particular part of the house. Okay, so in the garage we have our circuit breaker. Generally these things kind of look like this. Um, and they just have this little door here to protect people from accidentally turning off uh, parts of the house, uh, the electricity. Um, hopefully someone has been kind enough to label these for you beforehand. In this case we're going to be working on the downstairs lights. So we're just going to go to this switch and then flip it to the side like that. And now you've killed power to that part of your house. And we can go back down and verify with our voltmeter as well as the lights hopefully that that part it has no power okay so going back down to wherever we're going to be replacing our three-way switch hopefully um, you've had your lights on so now we can see that the light is off um, and then to be really safe and a good boy scout you'll check the power here to make sure there's no power in here and we can also go down the hallway to the other switch which i won't do right now but um, I'm going to go to the other switch, check that it does not have any voltage in it, and then we're going to start disassembling this using a flathead or whatever type of screwdriver you have. Um, take this out, and then you just pull this out. So, um, yeah, stay tuned, and uh, we'll check back in. Okay, so after removing the two screws, what you have, uh, you just pull these things out generally, and these are copper wires that are pretty stiff in general, so don't be afraid to give it a little bit of a pull. Don't pull too hard though. Um, and what we can see here is we've got two black wires, a red wire, and a bare copper wire. Sometimes in newer houses this wire might be green, um, and that just means it's G ground, um, but ground wire is also the bare copper wire too, just so you know. Um, so these two black wires, one of them is your live wire, your hot wire. Um, and then this red wire, which I think many people would think would be your hot wire, is not your hot wire, it is one of your travel wires. So the mystery that you have to solve when you are diagnosing and or wiring a three-way switch is which of your two black wires is your line wire and which is your uh, travel wire. And so um, this is the part where things get tricky and you have to pay attention. So um, in the case of these old switches, the first thing I'm going to do is expose the actual copper on these and sometimes what you'll find with older switches like we have here is that the um, they're very difficult to work with so usually what I do is we have enough wire to play with here that I just cut these wires on here because I don't want to bother trying to hurt myself pulling these wires out um, and then for this ground wire right here we're just going to be using a flathead screwdriver and then unhooking it and then we're going to be using the wire stripper here to get us some clean new uh, copper uh, exposed on these ends. Uh, and then we're going to do the exact same thing at the other side of the hallway with our three-way switch. Um, and then once we've done that, we'll get back to what you do next in order to identify which of these wires is your hot wire. Okay, and so after you've used your wire cutter and the appropriate gauge to strip the wires, the black and the red wires you see that were plugged into your old uh, switch um, the next thing you'll do is you'll put them out like this uh, you try to keep them from touching each other you want to put them as far away as possible just so you avoid shorting any circuits and potentially creating a fire um, but you'll put the wires like this i did the same thing at the other side of the hall this is the other side of the hall um, so have both uh places where you had your light switches for your three-way switch setup um, like this now. Double check you don't have any of these wires uh, touching each other. And then what we're going to do now is turn the power for this particular part back on at the breaker switch. And for illustrative purposes, here we are back at the breaker panel, flipping the power back on where it's needed. Okay, and now with the power back on, what we're gonna be doing is identifying which wire is our line wire. And what we're going to do here is check these wires. And what you're going to note how here is how none of these are lighting up, even though we have our power on. And that's because only one side of your three-way switch, only one of the switches, is going to be your line wire. So what we have to do is walk down to the other side of the hall where we have 
our other switch and then check the wires here. And we've now identified our line wiring for the sake of just uh, completion. Um, we can see that all the other wires here are not your line wire. So we have identified what our line wire is. Now that we've identified our line wire, tape this, make sure it's very obvious that this is your line wire, and then turn the power for this uh, part of your house back off. And depending on how big your house is, you're probably gonna get a bit of a workout doing this. Um, anyway, so now that we've identified our line wire for one side of our switch, what we're gonna do is make sure to turn off the power back where we had it previously and go back down to wherever we're working. With the power now off and back at your uh, first box where you identified where your line wire was, label your line wire, uh, you will now connect the remaining red wire and black wire together and this will help you identify what are your travel wires on the other side of your three-way switch. And to do that, I recommend making these little hooks and hooking these two wires together on one side and then once we've hooked these together I'll do that off camera but just make sure that these two wires are touching what we're then going to do on the other side of our hallway or three-way switch we're going to get out our multimeter so I'm going to connect these together <laughs> I'll try to do this off camera but basically you just want these things to be touching each other like that perfect um, leave your line wire where it is and remember the power is still off do not do this with the power on please uh, we'll now go back to the other side of our hallway to identify which of the wires is are our travel wires and so your travel wires when you have them two connected on this side of the hallway if we go back to the other side of the hall what we will now do is make use of the continuity function of our multimeter and this is why we need the multimeter so we're going to turn this on we're going to have it make a sound when you have the wires connected together and what you're going to do is you're going to hold these probes together and touch the two wires until you hear them beep and when you hear <laughs> i'll try to do this with one hand not it. Yep. Okay. So what I just did, and I'm sorry you can't really see it, is I had this black wire connected to this wire, black wire, and I had this red wire connected to this wire. And when that happened, this thing made noises, which means that there's continuity between this black wire and this red wire. And because we have our two traveler wires on the other side of the hallway connected together, this means that these are our traveler wires. And so the remaining black wire is your line wire on the other side of the switch. So after you've done this, label this wire on the side that was completely dead when you had the power off as your line wire. And now you know what your two traveler wires are for the other side of your three-way switch setup. Okay, and now with your line wire and your traveler wire successfully identified at both sides of your three-way switch, what you will now do, uh, depending on what kind of switch type you have, if you have this type where it the connection is done via these screws, is I really like to put little hooks into these. And um, so in this case, we've got our two kind of bronze screws, our two traveler wires are gonna go up top here. And then we have our line wire that's gonna go into this black screw on the bottom. And then we also have a green ground screw right here that will go onto our bare copper wire. Make note the power is still off. You don't need the power on to do this. Please don't do this with the power on. Um, what you do also that really helps and is best practice is the direction of these hooks will depend on the direction in which you need to torque down these screws on your three-way switch. So note how I have these hooks um, for the line wire and one of the travel wires pointing upwards like this. This is so that when I hook the wire around here, which I try to do off camera, um, when you're torquing this down clockwise, the hook is going, the metal is going in the same direction as the screw as you're torquing it down. And this will help you get a really good connection with your three-way switch. So you don't run the risk of having a bad connection and a non-functional uh, setup. 
So um, set up your the right side like this with the hooks pointing up like that. And then the left side of your switch, um, you have your hook pointing down so that as you're torquing down the left side of your three-way switch, the screw's rotating this way, it's pulling the wire uh, onto this screw and you have a really good connection. So set up your hooks like this, doing the same thing for your ground wire as well. Um, and then just torque all these down. Uh, and then we'll do this on both sides. And then you push this back into the wall after you've screwed down these screws. And uh, then you can turn on the power and check if you have everything working correctly. Okay, and so after we've screwed down the four screws, the two traveler wires, the line wire, and then our ground wire, you should have something that looks like this. And it will look the same on both sides of this. Uh, make sure you've labeled your line wire so you've, if you ever have to replace this switch, you've done this before. Um, and now what you can do, uh, once we turn the power back on, is just check before you put your faceplate and push this all back into the wall while it's at this state. Um, and make sure none of your wires are touching. Um, turn the wire back, turn the uh, breaker switch back on, and then just double check that these are working properly. So we're going to go turn the breaker on and then check. Okay, and then after you've flipped the breaker switch, the lights may or may not come on. It depends on what direction your three-way switches are. But the way you check this, see how the light just came off? Is you flip one side of the switch and then walk down to the other side of the hall or wherever your three-way switch is. Then you turn this switch to the other position. The light should come on. And then you walk to the other side of the hall again moving that other switch only one time and then seeing if you can then shut off the switch and then go back to the hall and then do the same thing. And if this works, then you've successfully wired your three-way switch successfully. And before you push this into the wall, turn off the power again, just so you don't accidentally shock yourself. The worst thing that you can do is touch, and I've learned this the hard way, touch the line wire to one of the traveler wires um, because that's what has that 120 volts AC current going through it. So um, once you've done this and you've validated that your wiring is correct, start putting this all back together. I'm going to wipe up a little bit because my brother is filthy and uh, try to clean up this area just so I can get a little bit of the dirt off the walls. Um, but then, yeah, so we're going to put the face plates in and then take a look at the final result. For illustrative purposes, uh, putting this thing back into the wall is very straightforward. It might have a flathead, this has a Phillips screwdriver, and you literally just push it into the wall. The wire coppers will kind of have a little bit of a bounce to them, but you just got to kind of push it and then keep torquing this thing down like so. And um, yeah, it's really exciting stuff. Um, do make sure the power is off while you're doing this as well, because I really don't want you to get shocked. Um, but yeah, just keep rotating this like that and eventually this thing will sit flush against the wall and then once it sits flush against the wall um, just you know this has a really nice solid feel to it now compared to the old switch um, I'm also going to put in a new face plate just so it matches the color um, and these little flathead screwdrivers will thread into these threads here on your new switch um, that'll do off camera and then we'll look at how things look at the end. Okay, and this is what the final product looks like. Uh, I put in the matching faceplate, screwed in the two flathead screwdrivers, um, did the same for the other side, and we can see that we now have a working three-way switch. So if I turn the light off at this side and then go to the other side of the hallway, uh, we have something that still turns on, which is wonderful. <laughs> We go back as we're walking through the hallway with the light on, we can turn the light off from the other side like that. So um, that is how you replace three-way switches and um, get the wiring correct. Uh, these are the tools that we use, and I'm sorry if this place is a mess, but um, I hope this helps, and thanks for watching.